In this video, I am going over um, questions one through, oops, sorry about that. Um, oh, that's good, I was on the wrong thing. Sorry about that, guys. I am going over questions one through 12 in this video, and that includes some of the um, double starred questions as well between um, those two uh, those um, questions. So in number one, what are the roots? What are the zeros? I am basically solving for X here in this equation. I'm going to go ahead and distribute my X. So now I've got X squared minus 18X is equal to negative 90. Now here we're solving a quadratic, so quadratics have to equal zero. So now I'm going to go ahead and add 90 to both sides. Quadratic we're going to solve here is X squared minus 18x plus 90, which is equal to zero. Now I could factor this when numbers multiply to get 90 and add to get negative 18. However, 10 and nine would add to get 19 or negative 19. So because there are no two factors that, that we could use here, this is why we need to use quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where I identify your a, your b, and your c here. So here I'm going to set this up. x is equal to negative b, which is negative 18, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 18 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 90, all over 2 times a, which here in this case is 2 times 1. Now when we start simplifying, notice how we do have two negatives making a positive. So this is now positive 18. So now I've got here 18 plus or minus. When you simplify here inside of the radical, you do end up with a discriminant of negative 36. So negative 36 over 2. Now here we can continue simplifying. This is 18 plus or minus the square root of negative 36. Remember 36 is a perfect square because that's six. So negative 36 would now be six i over two. Now we can divide, 18 divided by two is nine plus or minus three i. So that's why here the answer is b. Now question number two is asking for the number and type of solutions. So this is now using just the discriminant, finding the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. However, your quadratic has to equal zero. So there's two options. You could subtract 8x squared or subtract 4x and add the 10. I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract 8x squared here from both sides. So now I'm going to go ahead and I've got 0 is equal to negative 8x squared plus 4x minus 10 because I just moved the um, 8x squared over. Now identifying your a, b, and c. b squared, 4 squared minus 4 times negative 8 times negative 10. When solving or simplifying, you end up with a discriminant of negative 304. Because this is a negative discriminant, that means you have zero real and two imaginary. So that's why the answer is D. Now question number three is a two-parter. You're using this complex number here to identify the conjugate of the denominator and to find the quotient. Remember here, the conjugate of the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off A because that's just focusing on the numerator. I need to know what is the conjugate. So remember, conjugate is change the sign, but only of the imaginary part, your I. So here, I, if I were to solve this, this is already negative 8 plus 3I. So I'm not going to keep it negative 8 plus 3I. The conjugate would be negative 8 minus 3i. So that's why the answer is C. Then we would continue, so remember, right, to find the quotient, this is the other word for division. So I've got 9i over, I'll just go ahead and keep it, negative 8 plus 3i. Now multiply by the conjugate 
which is negative eight minus three i. So remember, change the sign of the imaginary part. Now notice here, we just need to distribute nine i. Nine i times negative eight, negative 72 i. Then nine i times negative three i, negative 27, but i squared because that's i times i. Then remember, i squared is always negative one. Two negatives make a positive 27, then minus 72 i. Now here in the denominator, you could do box method or just remember, we are always going to add together in our denominator. So eight times eight is 64. Three times three is nine. So here, that's why the denominator is 73. Now question number four, again, we're solving a quadratic, but notice how you have only two terms, no x. So treat it like a two-step. I'm just gonna rewrite it over here. And because we're solving for x, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 15 from both sides. Now I've got 9x squared is equal to negative 17. We're still multiplying x by nine, so now divide by nine. Now notice I can't divide my fraction, so I'm going to leave it negative 17 over nine. However, now I can take the square root, but remember when taking the square root of a fraction, that's the same as taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So the numerator is the square root of negative 17, which is the plus or minus, but I radical 17 over, well, the square root of nine, which is three. So that's why here the answer is B. E. Question number five. This is practicing our simplifying and we're multiplying the two radicals. So notice how here we have a negative on the out, so that's negative one times, so our answer is gonna be negative in the end. However, this is the square root of negative 64. The square root of negative 64 is not just eight, but eight i. But because of the negative one on the out, that's why this is negative eight i. Negative one times that, negative eight i. Then we're gonna multiply that by simplifying the square root of negative 12. Now, this is not a perfect square. However, again, you're taking the square root of negative one, so we do need i, then simplify the square root of 12. Well, that's the square root of four times square root of three. Square root of four is two, so two i radical three. Now, when multiplying, think of it multiplying like terms. Negative eight i times two i is negative 16, but i squared then radical three. However, can't leave my answer as is because i squared is always negative one. Two negatives make a positive 16, so 16 radical three. Then here, we now have um, our i, but raised to the fifth power. So remember, this is negative two also being raised to the fifth power. Negative two to the fifth power is negative 32. Then now we have i, we have power to a power, so now make sure to multiply. So this is now to the 65th. Then quarter method, divide by four. When you divide by four, you end up with 8.25. So here, oh, no, I'm sorry, not 8.25. Oh my goodness gracious, sorry about that, guys. Um, when you divide by um, 65 by four, you end up with, oh gosh, what is that? 16, there we go, 16.25. Now this is just one quarter. So this still stays as negative 32. Now i to the first power. i to the first power is always just i. So that's why the answer is negative 32i. Now question number seven. The volume can also be expressed as the area of the base times height. So if the area of the base is this polynomial here and the height is represented by this polynomial, then what is the volume? Well, if the volume again is just area of the base times height, we are just multiplying our area of the base here times our height. 
So this is just setting up our box method to multiply. So now we need a three by two, four x cubed minus 10 x plus one, then times x plus two here. Now when multiplying, here I just have four, but now x to the fourth power, because add the exponent, x to the third times x, x to the fourth, then negative 10, but x squared from x times x, then times 1x, or just x here. Then go down here, four times two is eight, so eight x cubed, negative 10 times two, negative 20 x, then two. So when getting your final answer and combining like terms, you have 4x to the 4th plus 8x cubed minus 10x squared. But now you do have two x terms here. So that's negative 19x from negative 20 plus 1 and plus 2 is the volume. Now question number 8. This is talking about how um, they're looking for um, how much space for the corn. So here, if they wanted to know the space for corn, well, you have the total area and you need to take out the beet. So you are going to subtract. So here they set it up as 3a times because this is the space needed inside. So this is an area problem where you just multiply length times width. So I have 3a times, so length times width, then the area of the beat, which is length times width, and subtract. So I'm going to go through and make sure, right? So here I've got 3a times 2a squared plus 4a minus 5. Distribute 3a, so now it's 6a cubed plus 12a squared minus 15a. So, so far so good. Then distribute 4. So now here you have minus um, 4a squared minus 12a plus 8. So does everything match still? Yes. Now because you're subtracting, make sure now to distribute a negative to every term. So I'm going to bring down 6a cubed. But now I have minus 4a squared plus 12a minus 8. So do we have the same? Yes. So now combining like terms, you still have 6a cubed plus 8a squared from 12a squared minus 4a squared minus 3a from negative 15a plus 12a minus 8. So does everything match? Yes. So notice how we are going to agree the whole process matches and is correct. Now, number nine, you're given these two functions here. Oh, sorry about that. You're given these two functions here, one minus c squared and c plus one. Which statement is not true? So we're looking for our false statement. So the first one says, well, here, if I multiply the two functions, I should get this as my final answer. So let's go through and check A, and we're going to multiply. I'm going to set up my box here of 1 minus c squared and c plus 1. So now I've got c, negative c cubed, because again, c squared times c. Now I've got 1 and negative c squared. Notice how no like terms can be combined and everything matches. So this is true, so a is not my answer. b is saying when you add, you end up with this answer. So I'm going to add 1 minus c squared plus c plus 1. Well, here you got to keep negative c squared and c, but 1 plus 1 is 2. So again, everything matches. So b is true. Now I'm going to go to c. So c says when you subtract g of c minus the m of c, this is your final answer. So g of c is again 1 minus c squared, but now minus c plus 1. Remember when di um, subtracting, distribute the negative. So 1 minus c squared, but now minus c minus 1. So now I've got negative c squared minus c, and 1 minus 1 is 0. 
but notice here that they're supposed to both be negative. So that's why the answer was C. Now these are double start questions where this is just kind of getting that extra practice in. So if you choose to do them, um, that's why I'm going over these. So this first one is again, just more practice on the one like what we just did. Where here, which statement is incorrect? So again, which statement is false? So when I add them, do I end up with this polynomial? So two plus r plus r squared minus four. Combine like terms, r squared plus r, negative four plus two is negative two. So a is true. Now, if I were to subtract, do we get this polynomial? So here again, two plus r, but now minus r squared minus four. Distribute the negative because you're subtracting. So this is two plus r, but minus r squared plus four. Combining like terms, I've got negative r squared plus r, but now plus six. So everything matches, B is not the answer. So now I'm gonna go to C, which is multiplying. So this is saying, when I multiply, do I get that polynomial? So I'm gonna set it up two plus R times R squared minus four. So here I've got two R squared, now that's R cubed from R squared times R, negative eight and negative four R. When combining like terms, there are none. So does everything match? No, because notice here that is a positive 2r squared and positive r cubed. So that's why here the answer was C. Then the next one, this is going back to identifying, well, here I am saying that I'm taking a polynomial and I'm dividing by x minus 2. Then it can be expressed the answer as another polynomial plus this fraction. Well, what did the fraction always represent? The fraction always represented when doing division, the remainder. So this means when you divide a polynomial by x minus two, you should get a remainder of three. But we're selecting the polynomial that cannot be used to support this claim. So again, here I can use synthetic division. So I'm gonna set this up as, actually, you know what? So to give me some space, I'll just do it here. So again, remember, right? Synthetic division, change the sign to positive two, and then just coefficients. So four and negative five. Always bring down the first and multiply below. Two times four is eight and add above. There's your remainder of three. So A can be used because you do get that remainder of three. Now I'm gonna to go to B. So same thing again. I'm gonna set up my synthetic with my coefficients of two, one, and negative 13. Bring down the two. Two times two is four, add, you get five. Two times five is 10, but you get a remainder of negative three. That's why the answer was B. Then here, this is now actually long division. So we're gonna set this up. And now we're, notice you're dividing by a trinomial. So this is x squared minus three x minus four. Now, do I need a zero? No, we're not missing any terms. So three x to the fourth minus the 14 x cubed. And here we go. Just like before, guys, we're gonna always divide the first term into the first term. So this is just one here. One going into three, which is still three. However, we're used to just taking away one x, but because this is x squared, you're taking out two x's out of the four. So that's why this is three x squared. Then multiply. So that's why we're gonna match up. Three times one is three and x to the fourth. But now you have to multiply the three not only to negative three here, which is negative nine x cubed, but you also now have to multiply the three to negative four. So negative 12 x squared. Then just like before, before you start combining, change the signs because you're just you're subtracting, so distribute a negative. So this is now negative, positive, positive. 
Here's your zero, negative 14 plus nine, negative five x cubed. Then one plus 12 is 13 x squared. Then bring down the next term here, 26 x. And again, divide the first term into the new first term, which is now negative five. One going into negative five, negative five, because you had three, but you're taking out two. Then multiply. So just like before, right? So negative five times that one, that's why they're going to match up to get negative five and x cubed. But negative five times negative three, so positive 15x squared, and negative five times negative four, giving you positive 20x. Then again, before you start combining, because you're subtracting, change the signs. So now positive, negative, negative. So here's your zero. But now this is negative 2x squared, then plus 6x. Then last time, bring down plus 8. Then divide again the new first term, which is our 1, but now into the new first term, which is negative 2. 1 goes into negative 2, negative 2. And then notice how no more x's. So when you multiply, there's your negative 2x squared. But now don't forget to multiply negative 2 to negative 3. So negative 3x, positive 6x. Negative 2 times negative 4 here, which is positive 8. So now notice when you change the signs, right, because you're subtracting, distributing a negative, everything cancels out with a remainder of 0. That's why the answer was A. Now question number 10, which of these expressions represents the parameter? Now notice here, parameter is always about doubling those um, sides that are the same. So notice how here I've got 4x minus 1, but plus another 4x minus 1, which is the same as 2 times 4x minus 1. So I already can tell I'm going to see my answer is D. So I'm going to keep going. Now I do need to add 3x squared plus 6. Now that side is all alone because we're not including the door. So we do need 3x squared plus 6. So I notice this first one, A, doesn't have that. I also notice here that this is subtraction. So I'm going to take out C. Then notice here, I've got x plus another x. So that is doubled. 2 times x or 2x. So everything matches here, and that's why this expression represents the parameter, which is d. Then question number 11. These two polynomials are multiplied. Um, which of these terms is in the resulting polynomial? So we do need to multiply. So again, box method or area model or FOIL. So as we set this up, we need to multiply but then see which of those terms is in the final answer. So now remember, when multiplying, add the exponent. So x to the third times x squared is x to the fifth. Then this is negative x cubed. Then here, negative 2 times x squared, negative 2x squared. Then now you're just multiplying by 1. So that stays x cubed, negative x, and negative 2. So now here, I've got x to the fifth. Notice how x cubed minus x cubed is 0, so they cancel out. Then I've got negative 2x squared minus x minus 2. So that's why here, when looking to see what term, the answer is C. And then last, question number 12. You have this polynomial here for cost, which is our C of x, where x represents our item sold. Then you also have the sales price, which is S of X. So you have these two polynomials here for cost and for sale. Which of these models, so what are we doing with these two polynomials? We're just adding them together. So all you need to do here is combine like terms. So I already noticed that I have no other X cubed or X squared. So I know I still need that 15 hundredths X cubed plus 100 x squared. Then combining to minus 0 0.01, or that 100 x, is now uh, 
um, 1.99x. Then 120 plus 30, which is 150. Because again, you are adding, so we're just combining like terms. That's why here the answer is C. Now part B says that R of X is X times R polynomial of S of X. Which of the expressions represents um, the profit, which is R of X, which is this new polynomial here, but now minus the C of X? Well, first off, we need to figure out what is R of X. Well, R of X is X times the polynomial S of X. So we are going to multiply. Um, so R of X is equal to, we're going to multiply X by 30 minus that 100th X because that is S of X right here. So when you distribute X, R of X is now equal to 30 X minus 100 X squared. So that is your R of X. So now I can set this up. So this is 30X minus 100X squared. Now notice how we are subtracting. So minus C of X. Well, what was C of X? This polynomial here. So that 1500X cubed. And remember, because you are subtracting, what do we have to do first before we start combining like terms? Distribute the negative one. So keep in mind now, we need to distribute that negative one. So we're gonna combine with our R of X polynomial here. Now minus the X cubed term, minus our X squared term, minus two X minus 120. So now here, no other x cubed, so negative 1,500 um, um, x cubed. But we do have like terms to combine here. We have our x squared and x squared. So that is now negative 200 x squared. Then 30 x minus 2 x, 28 x minus 100 x. 20. So that's why here the answer is C.